So you want to add outstanding subwoofer bass performance to your four-door Wrangler JL, but you don't want to give up any cargo space. If you are looking for a robust, well-integrated, awesome-sounding add-on subwoofer solution, you are definitely in the right place. I'm Mark from the YouTube channel Car Audio Fabrication here today on behalf of JL Audio. I'm going to show you the JL Audio Stealth Box subwoofer enclosure. We're going to do an unboxing of the subwoofer enclosure. I'm going to give you some of my first impressions, and we're going to see exactly how to install this step by step. To kick things off, let's see what comes inside the packaging. Here's the Stealth Box enclosure itself. We'll get this out of the way and come back to this. The Stealth Box mounting bracket and this bag which has instructions, warranty information, stickers, and all of the hardware. Let's get the enclosure removed from the packaging. And here we can take a look at the enclosure itself along with the 10TW1 subwoofer. The 10TW1 is rated at 300 watts RMS and you can purchase these in either the driver or passenger side version and you can also get the option of single 2 ohm or 4 ohm voice coil. The version of the enclosure we're looking at here is for the driver side of the vehicle. It's worth noting that if your Jeep Wrangler already has the factory premium subwoofer that is off to the passenger side of the vehicle, you'll want to get the driver side stealth box. And the reason for that is if you go to replace the passenger side OEM subwoofer, you have to buy a new replacement panel for the back of the vehicle. So be aware if you're planning on doing two of these, one on the driver and one on the passenger side, you'll need to get that replacement panel. But if you're only doing one stealth box, I definitely recommend getting just the driver's side, that way you don't have to deal with replacing any panels. If your Wrangler does not have a factory subwoofer, you don't need to worry about this. You can pick either the driver or passenger side. I'm gonna take off the front faceplate here so we can take a closer look at the Stealth Box and all of its parts. The faceplate here has this signature styling that we are all familiar with with Wranglers. I also like the unique design around the outside of the subwoofer. The faceplate is held on by those four bolts that go into nuts that are embedded in the fiberglass mold of this subwoofer enclosure. This enclosure is quite strong. JL Audio does a good job of using plenty of thickness for the fiberglass materials when they're manufacturing these, and you can see that it's wrapped with this black carpet that will match the interior of the vehicle. The 10TW1 includes a grill, so we don't have to worry about damaging this subwoofer at all. And the electrical connections for our subwoofer are right here. These are hidden by the faceplate when we bolt everything on. The wiring can come down this way that we attach from our amplifier, and these wires are air sealed tight inside the box. On the back side of the enclosure, they've included these rubber bumpers, and these are important because these prevent this enclosure from vibrating against the side of the vehicle. Finally, there are holes in the bottom of the enclosure. These are what we'll be bolting to on this bracket, and this is quite strong and robust as well. To install the Stealth Box, we need these common tools and one unique tool. We're going to need a pry tool, a knife, some flush trim cutters, a marker, a step drill bit and a drill, a half inch wrench or half inch socket, a four millimeter Allen wrench, and a poly hand riveter. The most unique tool here that some of you folks might not be familiar with is the poly hand riveter. What this does is it allows us to use a plastic rivet, more on where we will use these later. To get this install underway, we're gonna turn our attention to the rear wheel well on the side of the vehicle that we're installing in. In this case, we're doing the driver's side. Now, it's not required to remove the wheel, but I'm doing so for illustrative purposes, and this is going to give us access to eight clips that hold in this inside piece of plastic. One, two, three, four clips are located here. There's one in the front, one in the back, and then one here and one here for a total of eight. We remove these eight clips with the aid of a plastic pry tool. Now, if the clips become distorted or completely destroyed, not to worry, JL Audio includes brand new clips that we can use with the Stealth Box. We've removed those clips that hold in this shield. Now we need to cut out these plastic rivets. There's eight of them total, but we only need to remove the innermost six. We do not need to disconnect the outside one here or the outside one here. To do this, we use a utility knife between the inner fender liner and the plastic fender trim. Again, we don't need to be concerned with the fact that we're destroying these plastic rivets as JL Audio has given us new ones that we will use to mount everything back up. 
With all the clips removed, we can now flex the inner fender liner and remove it from the vehicle. Now we can turn our attention to the inside of the vehicle. We're gonna make sure our work area here is nice and clean, clear out the cargo area, and we're gonna fold forward the rear seats. You may notice I already have a stealth box installed on the passenger side. Let's continue along with installing the driver's side. We need to remove this carpet piece here. I'm carefully pulling at the outside perimeter, releasing it from the trim of the vehicle. There's also a carpet retainer clip that needs to be unclipped here. Once we completely remove the carpet out of the vehicle, we're going to remove that retainer clip as it is no longer needed. We will now take the metal mounting bracket and position it as shown. The curved surface will rest on the contoured wheel well and the indicated tab should be flush with the front edge of the raised rib. With the mounting bracket held in position, we're going to mark the location of the two indicated slots. We want to make sure that we hold the bracket tight so that it doesn't move when we mark the third hole here. Once we remove the bracket, we're now going to have the three different spots that we need to drill our holes. Now, using a step drill bit, we're going to carefully drill through the top ends of the slots. We're going to keep enlarging the hole until it's 3 eighths of an inch. After the two slot holes are made, we are then going to drill the third hole in that top location, again enlarging the hole until it's 3 eighths of an inch. We're now going to take two of the one and one quarter inch square neck carriage bolts and pass them through the bottom of the square holes on the mounting bracket. We will then take a 5 16 inch retaining washer and pass it over each of these bolts holding them in place. We're also going to take three of the 5 16 inch long hex bolts and we're going to prep each of these by putting a washer on them. The first two of these bolts will go through those lower slots. The third bolt is a little bit more complicated because we need to take this spacer and we need to put it behind the bracket and then put the bolt through the bracket, through the spacer, and through the vehicle. So just to be clear here, you can see that spacer is behind the bracket. On the outside of the vehicle, each of those bolts will first get an oversized washer, then a split lock washer, and then a hex nut. So if we take a look from outside the vehicle here, here's what our three mounting points are going to look like once we've added all that hardware. So now we want to hand tighten each of these, and then we're gonna go back into the vehicle and we're gonna tighten this top bolt first. Once that bolt is tight, we can tighten the two side bolts. With these steps complete, our mounting bracket is now mounted securely into the vehicle. The next thing I need to do is I wanna make sure I have a hole for these two spots to pass through that carpet because these two bolts are going to allow us to mount the subwoofer enclosure. To cut the holes in the carpet for these bolts, we're going to carefully position it in place and feel for it through the carpet and then use a sharp utility knife to cut a slot. Now we need to prep the stealth box itself. I'm going to remove the four M6 socket flanged button screws from the front of the stealth box using a four millimeter Allen. Next, we're going to remove the eight subwoofer mounting screws. We're going to disconnect the subwoofer wiring and remove it from the enclosure and remove the internal batting from the enclosure as well. Now we're going to place the enclosure onto the wheel well, allowing the square neck carriage bolts to pass through the holes in the bottom of the enclosure. Now this step is very important. We're first going to take one oversized washer on each of the bolts and we're going to apply one 5 16 inch hex nut onto each of the bolts. Tighten this down which fully seats this enclosure in place. With the enclosure fully seated we are now going to loosen only one of these bolts. With the other bolt still tightened down and everything out of the way on this one we're first going to apply the rubber sealing washer. Next, we will apply the oversized flat washer, and then the split lock washer, and finally the nut. I will now fully tighten this assembly. With this full assembly added, I can now remove that bolt and repeat the process. We can now reinstall the batting material. We can reconnect the subwoofer wiring, making sure that the red wire is connected to the positive terminal and the black wire to the negative terminal and we can reinstall the subwoofer using the eight subwoofer mounting screws. Now we connect the speaker cable to the barrier strip on the front of the enclosure after running the cable as necessary. We then reinstall the trim panel using the four M6 socket flanged button screws and a four millimeter Allen. These only need to be snug. We do not want to over tighten the bolts. We are now gonna grab our eight brand new fender shield retainer clips. We reinstall the fender shield back in position and use those clips to hold it in place. Finally, we're going to use our poly hand riveter tool to set these six plastic rivets. 
To use this tool, we first add one of the plastic rivets into the hand riveter as shown. We then insert the rivet into the hole in the vehicle. Now we can squeeze on the hand riveter, which starts to expand the rivet. You do this once, release, move the hand riveter back up on the rivet, and do it again. When you squeeze the second time, it will break the plastic rivet away. We repeat this process for the remainder of the plastic rivets, and then that little stud that is left over can be trimmed away with a pair of flush cutters. Now that we have the enclosure completely installed and wired to our amplifier, it's time to do some listening. Now although I'd love to play this subwoofer for you guys, it really isn't possible for you to get the full experience without being here in person. I found that this enclosure plays clean, accurate bass and was super impressed with the output. If you're looking to get down, the Stealth Box install definitely had no trouble pressurizing the cabin of the Wrangler and making some bass that you can truly feel. Now, along with the JL Audio Stealth Box subwoofer, JL Audio also makes a fuse mounting bracket and an amplifier rack mount, which are made to perfectly fit this vehicle platform. To see more, be sure to check out the other JL Audio Help Center videos, and you can learn more at the links on this video's page. On behalf of JL Audio, thank you for watching.